Now, Ricardo Palmera, he's a senior leader of Colombia's FARC rebel group. He was extradited to the U.S. in 2004 after being captured in Ecuador and after many failed trials here in the U.S. He was convicted in 2006 of conspiring to kidnap three U.S. military contractors in Colombia. Now, the case here is a pretty complicated one. Many people call for his release on the basis of human rights abuses on the part of the U.S., and there now is even a campaign underway to petition U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. Now, FARC is considered a terrorist organization by the U.S., but not by many other countries in the world. So the biggest question that we have to ask here is why the U.S. labels some people their enemies and yet works with other so-called terrorist organizations when it fits their purposes. Well, earlier I caught up with Ivan Eland, a senior fellow at the Independent Institute, to see what he thinks. All right, Dr. Eland, now we're obviously using uh, Palmera here as the catalyst for a much larger story, which is I just want to ask why it is that the U.S. really is so intent on meddling in other countries' affairs. For example, Colombia, they have a civil war going on there, and why is it that the U.S. has to directly intervene? Well, it doesn't really. Uh, the, the reason that we're helping with the anti-drug effort has always been sort of a mask for the anti-communist effort because the FARC is a Marxist group and uh, we don't like Marxist groups in our hemisphere. We have the Monroe Doctrine which goes back to the 1820s and particularly in Latin America, uh, we don't like any sort of uh, foreign power or Marxist uh, movement to take power or to be threatening to take power. So in that particular case, it's very uh, pragmatic. Uh, you know, there are drugs coming from other countries as well, and uh, we don't have such big anti-drug programs there. In fact, Mexico, we've been uh, uh, neglecting that for years, and of course, that's right on the U.S. border. And now, of course, they're not neglecting it anymore because it's blown up, but that's an example. Mexico is a much friendlier country uh, than the FARC group, which is Marxist. So uh, now the government of Colombia is friendly, but they're battling the group. So we're helping the Colombia government. Uh, but there are other countries out there that do not consider FARC a terrorist organization. So why is it that the U.S. does? Well, uh, our terrorism list is very political. Uh, we've had countries, there's a country section, and we had North Korea on there for years. And North Korea had long stopped uh, um, sponsoring international terrorism. They had guilty of other things like being weird and that sort of thing, but they, they stopped uh, funding terrorists, and, uh, but they kept them on the list. And they only recently in the last couple of years took them off, but they didn't take them off because they finally realized that they quit uh, sponsoring terrorism. They took them off because they were using it as a, as a bargaining chip for getting rid of their nuclear weapons. Uh, Cuba hasn't sponsored terrorism for a long time, but we do, the United States doesn't get along with Cuba, has it under embargo and that sort of thing. So you see countries that are on there. We have groups that are on there. Most of the groups on the U.S. terrorism list don't focus their attack on, attacks on the U.S. And we even have a, gr a group on the list that we're aiding that's a terrorist group, and that was the uh, Mujahideen in uh, Iraq. They used to attack Americans a long time ago. Now they're shifted toward Iran. They don't like Iran, and of course, we're opposed to Iran. So we're actually helping a group that's on our uh, terrorism list. So it, it gets very complicated, but it usually the underlying principle is it's whatever is in the U.S. interest to do. So that's what really is it lies at the bottom of it, because we do, we pick and choose uh, which terrorist organizations we want to call the enemy, which ones we want to work with. If we think of how we, we worked with the warlords in Iraq, we're now thinking about having reconciliation talks with the Taliban that are our biggest enemy, so why is it that FARC gets so much heat? How do we pick and choose these fights? Well, I think we're negotiating with the Taliban because we have to. Uh, the war wasn't going very well. So we're very pragmatic. The U.S. government is that, uh, pragmatic about who it deals with and who it calls terrorists. And uh, we have other politics involved on the terrorism list. You have the IRA is on there, but it's not it's not on the main group list of terrorist groups and there, there are different penalties for dealing with that uh, and the, there's lesser penalties for the IRA and of course much of the IRA's funding has come from the US and so the IRA was never on the main list and of course you know like I say a lot of this is political and a lot of it just depends on what the US policy and this can change uh, we took Saddam Hussein off the terrorism list in the 80s so that we could uh, funnel him uh, equipment and that sort of thing for his war against Iran who we uh, thought was uh, more dangerous at the time. But of course, uh, then that he was put back on later. So um, 
you know, it just depends. And of course, he never really sponsored any groups that focused their attacks on the U.S., uh, despite all the rhetoric of George Bush administration that he was sponsoring terrorists. Well, it just seems so bizarre to me, if we go back to the example of Ricardo Palmera, uh, why the U.S. chooses to, uh, if they want to make an example with this man, doesn't it seem counterproductive to extradite him and hold him here in the U.S.? Because if anything, then the U.S. is the one that gets put under fire for human rights abuse violations. There are more people that start joining these uh, free Palmera groups, and it, it just seems to work in quite the opposite way that, that we would intended to. Well, I think it's probably not a good public relations uh, uh, move because the U.S. Is, is not highly regarded in Latin America because we do intervene a lot there. And I think uh, people are saying, well, you know, if he violated the law, why not leave him in Colombia or, uh, you know, whatever country we're, we're extraditing somebody from. Uh, we've extradited a lot of terrorists from the Middle East, and maybe their justice system should be used uh, sometimes. But, of course, we want to make sure to put the guy out of action. So our government uh, presses the government of, in this case, uh, Colombia. And, of course, we're going to get our way because we are uh, funding billions of dollars in aid into Colombia uh, for this drug-slash-anti-communist uh, effort. So the United States can usually get its way, and it wants to make sure that uh, justice is meted out to these people. But, but a lot of times it would be better to rely on the local law and for, uh, justice systems to do these things. Because if, if we think of it this way also, is that often our involvement ends up fueling more anti-American right, sentiment. Exactly. This happens in Afghanistan. It's happened in Pakistan. So with cases like Ricardo Palmera, can we say that it does the exact same thing in Colombia? Yeah, I think it does. And I think uh, we, the United States, if it were had, ran a more sophisticated foreign policy, wouldn't be as heavy-handed as it is. But uh, yeah, the, we're used to being sort of an imperial power, and imperial powers do whatever they want, and they're roundly hated. The British Empire was hated, and uh, the Roman Empire was hated at the time. And, the, you know, the, the big big countries throw their weight around, and unfortunately, uh, they don't really have to do that, but a lot of times they do, and I think the U.S. could gain a lot more by uh, doing things uh, more indirectly, subtly, that sort of thing. All right, Dr. Lane, thank you for joining me. Thank you.